everybody, welcome to the All Stars. I'm Sal, and there's the All Star right here, Joshua Williamson, writer of Superman House of Brainiac on sale now, folks. Great book. Oh, you have a copy. Nice. I have an actual copy of it. Yeah. And what's funny is I actually have a copy of part two downstairs, and I'm just too lazy to go down and get it. <laughs> I don't blame you, man. I, I was gonna like, ask oh, you. I should have that. Yeah. Uh, what's up? We, we, we've we've talked about uh, comic books, comic books, comic books before, but I have yeah. to know, and this might be. Tale and tales out of school, so I will uh, I, I will reserve oh, the right good. to remove it. But uh, what's the pew pew pew? Because it's so funny to me. Oh, that I do that. Yeah, so we're talking about comic books, and you're like, oh, comic books, pew pew pew. And it's I have so no funny. Idea where that came from. I was uh, I was I was doing it to my wife, and because it because I have the exact same impulse to, to be like, it's the Wild West, baby, rooting tootin'. That's it. That's it. Because comics can be very much the Wild West at times, and I think. Uh, I don't know when I did that the first time. I think I was just talking to somebody and I was talking about something really dumb that happened because something dumb happens in comics like every week. Yes. And uh, and half the stuff that happens never, never people ever even find out about, thankfully. But, you know, you're just like, you're like, what happened? That person did what? Oh, man. And so there are times you're telling people about like whatever is going on in comics or, you know, you see something, you're like, why are they doing that? Right. Or, or it's that, I don't know. It, yeah, and then one day I was just like talking to somebody, and I think I did the gun fingers, and I was like, it was like pew 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 pew. <laughs> it's supposed to just be like, like you know, shit's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Was, that was sort of what the uh, the comics, 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 and then because you know the comics, comics, comics story, we we've talked about that. So it's like I just added my own spin to it now, which is the kind of like, oh, you know, comics, 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 and then you're like pew 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 because it's like it could be, because it means many different things. It could be like, oh man, this is awesome, but for the most part, it means like, man, what a what a wild time it always exactly. is. Right? <laughs> never, it's, it's never a boring week, and I, I, it's funny. Like I feel like uh, back in January, I made a comment uh, to my wife. Where I was like, man, I just want some I want some boring ass times. It was funny. Uh, Tinian and I were talking about this. Uh, James Tinian and I were, were talking about JT Four, as I called him. Uh, <laughs> we, we were we were talking about this uh, a few weeks ago, and we were talking about um, different different times at DC. Mm. And we were we were both going back and forth on like uh, some of the crazy things that have happened in the past. And at one point, I was like, we were talking about a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of nutty stuff happened. And I was like, James, you know all that happened in like one week, right? <laughs> that was like a Monday to Monday of lunacy. And he was like, oh, oh no, God. that's not right. And I was like, no, think about it. And I broke it down for him. I'm like, this happened Monday, this happened Tuesday, this happened Wednesday, this happened Thursday. And then that happened the following Monday. And he was like, holy crap. And I'm like, yeah, man, uh, it's never boring. It will never be boring. We were we were joking around about how it will never be boring. But, uh, yeah. but that's how some of this stuff, the pew, pew, pew came <laughs> I, I have to ask you, is is there a period? Because, like, right now, like, you know, obviously the best time for comics is now because you're in it and you're writing it. But, like, yeah, yeah. if you – what, which one – which era of comics could you – do you think you could easily just slide in and be like, yeah, I could have – I could have I could have dominated during this time. Like, I could just oh slid in God. and, like, make my mark right here. I think I look at the different eras of comics that I think would be really interesting to be working in, right? Yeah. Like, I think it would have been really interesting to come in and that moment when Joe Quesada became editor in chief at Marvel and they were really experimenting and they were bringing in new talent, you know, and they were like, let's get this Bendis guy who does black and white comics. Yeah, no offense, we got to get Ron Zimmerman like, in here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we should talk about that. I texted you this, right? Did I text you this? That, that no, I, no, we I, were talking about that. I liked, I, was... ultimate, I liked Ultimate uh, uh, Adventures. Adventures. Yeah. It's... I liked it. It was a weird, it's a, it's a fascinating book because... I actually don't remember what came first. If mm. if uh, I'm gonna say some sacrilegious stuff here in a moment, I don't remember what came first. Did that come first, or did All Star Batman come first? That came. All Star Batman came after it. Yeah. Uh, also, I really love Duncan Verdago's art. Oh, so it's like, that art is friggin' great. I love yeah, his work, yeah. and he hates that book. By the way, like he has gone he on really? record. Oh yeah, he's like, well, because <laughs> Zimmerman didn't know how to like trim his work down because he didn't write comic books like he'd done a couple of backups yeah, yeah. for spider-man and stuff and that's it and so for zimmerman like it was just oh i'm writing a script because i'm writing for tv basically and then you'll draw it and zimmer and 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 forget and figredo was like you are doing three types of action in one panel like he yeah oh yeah to... i i think what there's a lot when i'm writing scripts somebody have said this before that like I, I, you have to when you're writing you have to go back through it and check how many times you say the word and in a panel description oh. Yeah, because if the and implies other motions, you might be doing it wrong, right? Like totally. if it's in terms of characters or and in terms of background, but it is like you know, it's funny though because in some of them you're like, um, 
you know, let's say in a script, I say green arrow fires an arrow and the arrow hits a apple. That is an and, but you know, there are fired it. And yeah, can, it, yeah, yeah, there's there's clearly like you there there's ways of doing that. Right. Yes. So it's really about you and your artist's uh, communication. But yeah, that book is funny because it's basically like, you know, because it was part of that whole contest thing. Right? You decide. So, yes. You decide. Yeah. So it was like, you know, Captain Marvel and then it was uh, Marvel mm-hmm. and then it was that and it was like, you know, clearly Captain Marvel won. won. Yeah, by far. I mean, that book was also great at that time, you know, yeah. like and it only got better. You know, That's the thing is like because of the contest, because of oh, the it like better. it yeah. got better. Like they well, because David was like playing with it. And he you know, clearly Peter David was like comfortable where he was and having and feeling himself. He was already established icon Peter David. But when he was under threat, I mean, obviously, like not to do that episode again, but like friggin apparently I think Jemis went on the Internet and was like, these books are getting canceled and like, you yeah. know, and Peter David jumped on and he's like, yeah, um, first of all, this should be an internal conversation. And secondly, uh, if you say that now the book will be canceled because no one's going to buy it because now it has the the Red Sea on its chest. The it's gonna- yeah, yeah, dude, it's it's a that stuff gets really complicated and rough. And then it's like but also I think part of his argument at the time was like, well, you're not advertising it. Right, right. Well, he was like, you're putting advertising behind books that automatically sell, but not behind yeah. the books that don't sell. Well, he was on, you know, it's funny, I, I realized this just recently this week that it was like, I didn't realize, you know, time time is a funny thing, right? Like, mm-hmm. and especially in comics, like, you kind of forget the timeline of stuff. And, you know, it, it's funny looking back, I was talking to someone else about this, where it's like, there's only a 12-year difference between Psycho and Godfather. Right. And you would think it's, a, you would think it's a bigger, it's like 50 kind of, or something. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's... Think, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 20, you know, it's at least 20, but it's like, no, it's a 12-year difference. I mean, you're talking about like, Rosemary's Baby is like what eight years after Psycho, mm. so it's like it isn't. It's interesting that how much happened in terms of style, in terms of Hollywood, in this thing. And comics are always the same thing, right? Like you look at the eighties, and you're just like, man. If you look at eighty one, eighty nine, oh yeah, <laughs> what a difference, man. What a like, quantum leap. Whoa, yeah. you know, like it is like whoa, like this is crazy, and you know, the same thing. 90s even the 90s i feel like are almost balanced in a weird way like yes. there's a weird balance to it but then if you went from 91 to say 2001 huge that is a humongous change in comics and i think there's these little progressions and stuff and so to get back to your oh so part of that is is that like captain marvel um he went from hulk to captain marvel yeah like yeah boop, boop. and i thought it was like years apart but it was like no he went to captain marvel after he finished hulk right uh but i do so i would say Getting back to your original question, we don't mm-hmm. have to talk about Ultimate Adventures too much. Um, <laughs> even though it's so funny because I think the logic was like basically like Ultimate Batman. That's pretty yeah. clear with Thor and like that was kind of what they were going for in that moment. Um, yeah, well, but I also giving it to a humor writer is uh, like, so then, yeah, yeah. It was weird though. I don't, I don't know the choices of, of why they were doing. I think there was just relationships there, but. Well, let me tell you. Yeah, uh, it was absolutely been... relationships. Yeah. Was it Joe's relationship or was it Gemma's Yes. It was Joe. Joe loved oh, okay. Zimmerman. Like, him. Joe was, like, all uh-huh. in on what Zimmerman was doing and, like, defended him in mm-hmm. freaking message boards and stuff. Like, it was a whole thing. I didn't know that. Well, so back to your original question. I would say that would be a really cool moment. The 90s would have been interesting. The 90s would have been done a, You could have had, like, an 80-issue run on any <laughs> character. <laughs> that stuff is crazy. When you look back and you think about how long these runs were. I mean, right now, it's actually really interesting how there aren't really a lot of long... I'm trying to think right now. I mean, there aren't really too many long runs. No, in- X-Force hit 50, like, the other week. Dude, I know, and that is an accomplishment. Like, yeah. like Bravo to Ben Percy, and uh, I don't think Josh was on that anymore by then. I think he had left a while ago. Yeah, but it's like you know, Ben Percy, that and Wolverine. Wolverine, like, yeah, was on those books for fifty issues. Like that is a humongous accomplishment. Like Bravo to Ben Percy. Agreed. Uh, I was just seeing this the other day when when X Force Fifty came out, and I was just like, man, good job. Dude. Yeah. Like, so rare right now that people are having long run on books and i don't know what what has changed why it's not possible but when you go back and you look at where it's like it was like the norm for somebody to be on a book for like four or five years you know and now totally. it's like that just isn't the case and it's 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 interesting you know i feel like i'm probably it's like because even when, when nick spencer was on amazing i think he was on amazing for like three years you yeah, know maybe. it wasn't long. i'm probably the last 
I had to think about this. I'm going to toot my own horn here, I guess. I feel like, well, no, Dan Slott is, is probably the last person to have the last long, long reigning round, champ. Right? Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. It has to be him on Spider Man stuff. I'm like, I'm trying to think of who else there is, but it's funny because, like, right now, um, uh well we'll get into this in a minute but i think that would be there's different moments i think that would be interesting you know even at dc it's like to be i was around oddly like i knew people during the infinite crisis time period i knew editors i knew creators you know um i actually had dinner with jeff the night the infinite crisis i think issue like four or five came out i don't I, i it was one of the earlier ones it was before uh, the before issue five, because issue five was when the one year later stuff happened. Oh yeah. So it's like I knew people in that time period. I think that would have been a fun moment at DC to be doing something, you know, mm-hmm. um, like even with one year, like even with one year later, uh, you know. But I think there's just different moments. Like I think Marvel in the early two thousands, you know, would have been really interesting and stuff. I, I think that would be really fun. But the long run thing is funny because like I look at you know. I've been looking at Hickman's work a lot lately mm. and it's like, you know, uh, I really enjoy ultimate Spider-Man a lot. Like I think yeah. it's, a great, it's a great comic book. A great um, you know, and I've been looking back at his work and it's like, you know, it's interesting how he actually hasn't done a lot of books, mm. but he has had long runs on those books. So like fantastic yeah. four, you know, he's got two omnibuses of it. Right. I think it's two, you know, and you look at Avengers and I actually, I remember reading Avengers it's been interesting now because I, I just made this decision. I don't know how it happened. I think I was like, I, I did a reread of his Fantastic Four a few years ago, right? Because I love Fantastic Four. And there was a few years ago, I went on a kick and I was like, I'm going to read everything again. Huh. And so I read just a lot of Fantastic Four. Do you have a favorite around. now because of that? Like there's the, there's the, uh, what, what for you is the definitive Fantastic Four era now? Oh, well, Jack and Stan. I mean, come on. Jack and Stan. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, you get Jack and Stan, and I love the Walt Simonson stuff, obviously. You know, Me too. Like, yeah. Great. There's a lot of John Byrne stuff. And then it's like, and then obviously uh, Mark and Ringo. Like, yeah. I mean, that is just, it's such a perfect modern. Uh, I like the Malar one, and the Hickman one I really liked. And I mean, that stuff with Johnny is so good. And, and, Isn't and it? that book. And, but so I, I started rereading Avengers. And I don't even know how, why I made the decision. It was one of those things you just sit down, all of a sudden you find yourself reading a comic book, and you're like, all right, fuck it, I'm in. You know? Yep. And so I was like, <laughs> So uh, maybe like a week ago, I started rereading Avengers and New Avengers. And I read them when they were coming out. And yeah. I remember them that well. Like, I remember, it's weird. It's a weird thing because I feel like either it's because I'm a different creator or a different person. I'm older. Even though that wasn't that long ago. Mm-hmm. Even though it was like 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 10 <laughs> plus years ago, you know. Uh, so I started rereading it. And I was like, um, I was like, damn, this is good comic books. Good comic books. Like reading Avengers and then um it's funny because i was reading avengers and i was like when should i stop and start reading new avengers i don't remember so i'm reading avengers and then all of a sudden infinity started and i'm like okay now i gotta go back <laughs> so now, now I, I i so i started reading infinity last night so i was reading infinity number one last night and that's when i was like you know what i'm going all the way to secret wars i was like i'm yeah. just doing <laughs> i'm gonna the whole thing i'm just going oh, for it but man that new avengers comic book is real good like really i was good. uh I remember reading what was coming out, but then reading the the first six issues and like just oh, in one sitting the so exciting, Black. dude. I was like, man, Hickman, this is just good, just good book, just a good yeah. book. And it, like, it was just a really uh, interesting moment. And wh- what was funny about it was, you know, it's weird how sometimes you'll read a book when you're in the moment. When you're in yes. the moment, you if you're reading a lot of stuff, it feels like everything is in that moment, right? right. And then when I read new Avengers, there's lines that are talking about like what's going on in the Marvel universe in that moment. And I'm like, Holy shit. I forgot about all of this stuff, but it still reads like, I can still read it. Like I can still read it and, and know exactly what's happening. And so I actually, had, I read infinity like many times because I did the, what if infinity issues. Yeah. Was, like, and one of those is like my, that's, that was a really fun project. I got to do different stuff. I got to pick all the artists we worked with and all the artists cool. were people I knew um, like Riley, Rosmo and I did one of them. Mike yeah. Henderson, uh, who you know does uh, did nail biter with one of them, and then um, God, who else was there? It was Jason Copeland? Uh, but I did a lot of, of those, and it was just really fun. I think Mike Norton did one of them with me, and like we were just having a good time. And uh, one of them, 
one of my favorites is the Guardians of the Galaxy one that we did. And I wrote that <laughs> like the day. I wrote that like the week that the Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out, which also <sighs> dates how long ago this was. Totally. So it was like scary in my head. And so uh, I really enjoyed uh, writing those. But that meant that I was like, so I was reading, um, I was reading Infinity, like in- Infinity many times mm-hmm. to like make sure I got it right like many, many times to make sure I got it right. And was doing what ifs that actually could spin out of story plots in there. Right. right. And um, it was really, uh, yeah, it was really fun. And so now I'm like back into it and it's like, now I'm looking at it with a different perspective, you know, I'm just going yeah. in as like a fan, just reading it, you know, not so much like for work. Pro- like, for <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm reading it. Cause I, I remember when infinity was coming out, what's funny is I think they asked me, if I remember correctly, Marvel asked me about the what if Infinity is like while well, Infinity was still coming out. Huh. And so I actually wrote it. I wrote those Infinity books almost a year before they came out. Oh my God. And so, um, but then you go into Secret Wars and I actually work on Secret Wars too. So it's the same thing where it's like, I did a Secret yes. Wars and some one shots and stuff. So it'll be interesting to like come to it now and perspective on it. But I do, I do miss that. I miss, what's funny is I think there's a, 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 how do I put this? This might be more of a marketplace and comics conversation, but it's like, I think that when these books have these longer runs, you have this thing where the creator has confidence in the vision that they're doing, right? Like them plus editorial have this plan for what they're doing and they have confidence in it. And you, there's something about the work where, you know, they're telling this big story and there's a a plan and there's confidence there. And I think that confidence in those books radiates out. And then the readers also pick up on it. And, you know, I think that's what's been interesting now about not having a lot of long runs. So I'll give you this uh, weird, weird random example. So I don't like watching Netflix TV shows. And uh, and this yeah. is why. Uh, how many get canceled after the first season? You know? Oh, now? It's like... Too many? Yeah, now. <laughs> Too many, Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's like my problem is is that you you go into it and it's like I don't have confidence that I'm going to get emotionally invested in this show and then it's never going to end. So it's like I watched all oh, of yeah. Three Body Problem. So I watched all of Three Body Problem and okay. I really liked it. I really liked it. And then I was like I found out that every episode cost $20 million an episode and I was like <laughs> this show how is this show going to continue? And I, I read upon it I'm like oh there's three books that means three seasons. And then I was, when I finished it, it was like midnight when I finished the last episode. And I was like, I rarely binge watch a show, but everybody in my house was sick for a weekend except for me. So I was just, I guess I'm sitting in the living room by myself, um, binge watching <laughs> this show. But uh, so I binge watched it and it was like midnight. And then I just went online and I'm like, what happens in the two other books? Just, just <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to find out. Just in out. case. Yeah. I'm just going to know now. I just want to finish the story now. Oh. <laughs> oh no. I lost okay. It. Okay. Sorry. I was gonna say. So yeah. Uh, with three by problem, it made me like, even more aware of the idea that like, oh, I don't know if I want to, if get I want invested. to get like, invested. And so the problem with that is if you start building up that kind of like lack of confidence, basically in the work, and you you train people to be like, oh, this might not always be here. Right. I wonder if that's, it is part of the challenges we're having right now is that there isn't these kinds of long runs that you can trust and put faith in and know you're going to get there. You know, it's like, you know, yeah. Jason doing Thor for almost, it wasn't almost 10 years. It was like eight years, I think. Yeah, like Jason was Thor for a long time. Yeah. I yeah. feel like that allows you to have some kind of confidence in it, you know? And I think Rebirth was the last time we had long runs on things, you know, you had Tom on Batman, me on flash, you know, like Vin Diddy did 50 issues of green lantern, but had already done like 30 issues of green lantern before that in new 52. So it's like, you had these moments where these longer runs and I, but it is tough because it's like, it's so hard to predict right now. Like, can you do these long runs on these books? Right. Like, I I think it's, it has a lot to do with acceptable loss, I think, or at least Mm -hmm. acceptable, standards like it's not that because you gotta play the long game you have to you respect the the long game. it's a long game and, yeah. and and you got but yeah i mean you have to have the capital in order to maintain the long game but like i think so much corporate approach has been dominated by short-term gains and no one's immune to it like when no, it comes to the, the highest there's a weird, towers there's a weird, like, yeah yeah 
there's a really weird like lack of patience, which I said it as an interview, exactly. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. Like it's you're no, you, it you nailed it. It's it's a lack of patience. It's a lack of 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 like just it's all about short term games. It's all about short, like lack of patience. People are like in this place where they're like, but what if I'm not here tomorrow? And it's like, dude, one day tomorrow will come and you won't be here. Like, yeah, no, of course. Yeah. What I, mean, gonna... I, I, uh, there's, there's a weird mix of things. I, I fall into this too of like my, it's interesting, like working on Energon Universe. And I had this call with um, Robert and Daniel and Sean, like maybe two years ago now. I don't remember when this was. It was when we were, we were really kicking up and, and we were talking stuff out. So it was a while ago. Yeah. It's, as I was writing the outline for Duke. And that was when I think I told you, like, we were in the middle of this call and we're all like, oh, you know, we're doing this Duke book and we're going to do this and this and this. But all of us kept talking about Cobra Commander. And that's when we came up with the idea of like, maybe we should do a Cobra Commander book. Like that was yeah. part of that conversation. But in that same conversation, Robert did say something to me. And maybe this is part of why some of the stuff with Energon Universe is working so well right now is that like, Robert was very much like, we have to have patience. And we have to have, you know, the ability to know that we're going to be doing this for a while. So we don't need to rush certain things. Yeah. And, and, uh, he, you know, he, we, we were talking about that bit and I think maybe that's part of it. Cause that's, so that actually was very freeing for me. Right. It made me be like, cool. I can actually let this breathe in a way. I don't feel like, Oh God, if I don't do, you know, cause it was, cause flash was fascinating because working on flash, it was like, you know, me, me and Scott, uh, Snyder used to talk about this. Some of the creators used to talk about this, where it was like, you have to do, you have to basically change things up every six to eight months on a book right. or six to eight issues. But when I was on Flash, what was crazy was was that six issues was three months. Oh. So if you really go back and you look at what I was doing, every three months I was changing gears. It was like, here's Gorilla Grodd for three months. Here's the Rogues for three months. Here's this for three months. Here's Professor Zoom for three months. It was like every three months I was having to change it up. Yeah. And in some ways it was like running a marathon. Like I learned a lot from that experience, but at the same time it also taught me to not be patient. It's weird. It was a weird mix of things, but I was always playing the long game with certain story points, you know? Yeah. Like, in issue one, I knew what I was going to do at the end of the story. Like I knew, you know, all these pieces, like I knew eventually Thawne was going to kill Godspeed. I knew that really early. So it was like all this stuff, this long game for it. But, you know, I, I, I do, it's funny. It's like, it's, it's a weird thing to be like, I wish we could have more long runs because it is unpredictable. Right. Yeah. Cause you're like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at these books and like you said, like X-Force and uh, Wolverine. Yeah. But then I'm looking at like, yeah, I don't know what's a long run. And then how do I word this? I'm trying to remember word this, like appreciating something while you have it, I guess. Like you don't even yeah. know until the ending. And you're like, oh, that person was on that book for like five years. Great. <laughs> like, uh-huh. <clears throat> well, and yeah, we have such short memories weird. as comic book fans. Like we are, uh, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I, I like, I was among the people who are like, I mean, you know what? I won't even put anybody under the bus. I'm just going to say, if you are currently making comics today and you're there for more than four or five years on a book, odds are there, the conversation is going to come up in the public gallery. That's yeah. it's probably time for them to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like, not, even if it's going well, people are still like, well, but I'm used to, I'm conditioned by the culture to expect this creator to end their run. Well, also, it's it's also like people age out of books. I mean, that's that's sort of what it is. I mean, you you just because of life, things change out, and I feel like things usually, you know, I look at Transformers a lot, and like Transformers as a brand on the cartoons, they would basically redo it like every three to four years, you know, right? Like Max, and it's like it is a similar thing where it's like you you need to in a perfect world. What I'm going to explain right now is going to sound really silly. <laughs> What you want to do is is you want someone to start. What I'm going to say right now is going to sound really silly, and it's not a rule or a thing, but I'm just using an example. Okay. Yeah. You want to get somebody really into something when they're in like middle school, right? right. Middle school, high school. They have maybe a little bit of money to spend. They're getting their own thing. They're figuring stuff out, and they're kind of like you're in a lot of ways your ideal audience, right? Like that's you know I was already really into comics when I was in elementary school. By the time I was in middle school, that was me like going up on my bike, getting my own stuff, right? You know. Yeah. You're looking but for identity. You're looking for belonging. You're not asking a lot of questions. Just... <laughs> <laughs> but so here's the thing. You might really get into it. And then by the time you're a freshman in high school, you're like, oh, that is something I read or something I like or a show, or whatever. But then by the time you get to be 18, getting out of high school, your life changes. Boy, your life right. is, it's one of the reasons why there's so many shows about high school, because it is the last thing that most people have in common, right? right. Because right. everyone's lives 
splinter in crazy directions once they leave high school. Once you turn 18, everything goes fucking nuts. Right. And so in that moment, like I think about comics and the TV shows, you know, that I was reading or watching. And like, I basically didn't watch television for like two or three years, you know, like show in that window, I totally missed. Like I ended up watching them later. Right. Right. And it's the same thing with uh, comic books where there was a window there where I was still reading, but I wasn't reading as much. And I was like, you know, picking books up a little bit later, you know, but I was, I was much more limited by what I could do in that window. So I think it's a similar thing where you look at that, that little window there of like, you have that amount of time, you're like maybe five years on something. And then it's a good time to switch things up and uh, to, you know, make it uh, exciting. Not to say it's not exciting before that, you know, no, but then you look at Dan Sly and he made this like amazing Spider-Man run for 10 years. So what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right, right, right. But I mean, and and then and like you, like you said, like he switched it up, you know, like right when, right when things oh, were yeah. getting comfortable, Superior Spider-Man, and then right after yeah, that, was, beyond, yeah. like you know, the the next thing, which uh, it's not beyond, it was, um, you know, uh, Park Industries. Yeah, yeah, no, Beyond was later. What was Park Industries called? That was called something else. Uh, right? It was that. Uh, there was. I think it was just all new. Well, there was also Big Time. Right? Big time it was, was before these, that. It was great. You know, yeah. Yeah. He created all these little eras for that book. And I think that's also one of the key things to do when you're on these books. You got to create these little milestone eras. He just really played that really, really right. You know, and I said Jason Aaron's a similar thing. And, yep. you know, Scott on Batman was like that because it was like the first year's Quarter Vows, the second mm-hmm. year was uh, uh, Death in the Family uh, or Death of the Family. Well, it's weird because like, I think it was 18, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah, no, you're right. It was like, it was Quarter Vows, then it was Joker. Then it was uh, super heavy. Uh, was super, heavy there, yeah. super heavy came after, and then it was like, well, it was in game, and then it was super heavy, right? Am I getting this yes. wrong? Yes, yes, it had to be. Yeah, because he, he yeah. Dies. So it's yeah. like it's really a fascinating moment, and I think that's that's something people should sure should look at when you're building this stuff out. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, um, yeah, I like I like long runs on books. You know, you look at again like Avengers, and you look at Bendis on Avengers, and how he just did this like definitive. Oh. Like crucial, dude. It's funny to be uh, reading this stuff now because it's like clearly Bendis's Avengers run is so crazy influential, and not just on the book, but like on Marvel as a whole, right? Like, oh it, yeah, no, you could you could see like Bendis kind of like figure like almost learning the the, the math as he's going. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, like this is this was not the flagship Marvel book. It has become that. It can be the launch pad for events. Like it'll be the touchstone yeah. for Marvel fans to check in to figure out what like the pulse is in terms of like where Dude, that, book know, what, the, that book became the most important Marvel book real fast. Exactly. <laughs> like, real fast. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't hurt that he also wrote all the events that surrounded it, but like and why yeah, yeah, when yeah. another event happened that wasn't by him, it felt completely incongruous to what was going on. Like yeah, yeah. Civil War, yeah. while it was the thing that cha- like Civil War without that, you don't have modern Marvel today. You don't have Mar- yeah. Marvel Cinematic Universe. You don't have like a lot of stuff. And I, when I say that, I don't mean like Civil War made the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm talking to the audience. I'm just saying like Civil War changed everything. Oh um, yeah. And it made, and it made a ton of money. <laughs> and it made a ton of money. Yeah, exactly. It made a ton and of made- money and it was a cool little moment and it was a, co- it was a cultural moment too right yeah. like it was a moment of conversation it's like you know that is a moment in marble history like yeah you there's Boom. before and after and that is one of them it's exactly so but yeah. but bennis was already changing the game as it was happening and you could see how he's like yeah. i made the new avengers here we go oh they're all gonna fight each other you could feel that moment where he's like oh i gotta change everything right now we just formed the team and now they're going to fight each other. Yeah, and then he gets to have two books out of it, and then he's able to basically be like, oh, this scroll thing is why this happened. You know, like, he was... Dude, it was yeah. crazy. Then, um, but it's funny reading the Hickman Avengers because now I'm like, oh, now this also plays a huge part. <laughs> like, uh-huh. it's wild reading it now and being like, holy crap, yeah, this is all... Man, they must <laughs> love Hickman. Like, I was just like, dude, yeah, they, they gotta love him, like, reading this stuff, but... Yeah, yeah, long runs, I don't, I don't know why we started talking about long runs, but, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're talking about, like, what era of comics you oh, want to jump yeah. into. Well, I think, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I like long runs, obviously, you know. Yeah. I mean, fun when you can sit down and binge read something you know like it's uh and you see the ups and downs like reading robert kirkman's invincible i read it during the pandemic at one point i just such an emotional roller coaster at times you know that book is so good and i think it's like a blueprint i think for what i think superhero books should be in a lot of ways you know yeah um 
And uh, I mean, look at what we've been doing with Cobra Commander. And it's like, I think there's some of that DNA into the book of just like, we're, we're taking this thing. There's this, I, I've said this to you before, I think, where there's this like Jordan Peele quote where Jordan Peele talks about how you need to take B-movie concepts. His favorite type of genre is basically taking a B-movie concept and doing it as elevated as possible, right? Totally. And he always uses Jaws as the example, where it's like Jaws is, you know, it's a, a movie about a giant shark, and that would be, you know, like that's a B-movie thing, right? It's yeah. a, giant, a giant shark or whatever, but then he took it and he just elevated it as much as possible, and I think that's the kind of stuff that I really gravitate towards, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and even when working on Energon Universe, it was like, we took it seriously, you know, we took Cobra Commander seriously. We took Duke seriously. And we're like, okay, we're going to tell this story. And uh, with, with Cobra Commander, it was like, it, it's funny with that book because it's it's very bloody. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think people are shocked by how bloody it is. Um, but I was like, well, that's it, though. Like, we're trying to do something different. And we want to, you know. But I, I plan on, on being with those characters for a bit. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think, what are, the, what are long, what's a long run that's happening right now? I mean, Chip's oh not back. Right. Yeah, Chip's Batman run is, I mean, like, uh, the Batman runs have <sighs> attempted to be that, right? Like, ev- like except, with, with one notable exception, I think around between Jamestown the Fourth and Chip Zdarsky, I'm not sure why. Feels yeah, like there was a really short but, Batman run. Well, um, the reason that happened was because it, we already knew I was going to do the crossover issues, and then, yeah. you know, I James leaving when he did, so it was like, oh, do you want to just do the four issues before that as well? And I was like, <laughs> I guess I'm doing that. Yeah. Um, I really like that though because I was uh I really like working with Jorge Molina and I love the oval costume, so we got to actually do that. And, you did, uh, yeah. Yeah, so you have this little window of time. Um, you know, and it's funny, like I don't know uh if I'll ever get back to 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 Batman like that, you know, mm-hmm. like full on like that. Um I have other I have other goals and stuff I want to do now. And, and obviously I really yeah. enjoy writing Superman. Like Superman's been really fun and like we were saying before when we started it was action comics, you know, and yeah, the fact that uh yeah, Rafa just killed it on this issue, dude. It's oh my so, god, it's so bonkers. This dude is uh, such a maniac, and he turned in some pages this morning. Um, and I was like, man, I love working with Rafa. He's one of my favorite artists to work with. He's yeah, very thoughtful. He always goes, always goes hard. That dude, yeah. he's like always takes it to the next level every time. Um, oh, you know yeah. what's a good? Uh, what's a run that uh, hit twenty five? Batman Superman World's Finest from uh, Oh yeah, more yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good phenomenal one. Yeah, book. The fact that it's uh, for so long, yeah, uh, that's a really good one. Duggan's been on Invincible Iron Man for about sixteen, seventeen issues now, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, that's what I wonder. Like, I guess, I guess, would be my question to everybody watching this: like, what do you consider a long run? run. Yeah, right. Because I'm thinking, like, I don't know, 30, 40 issues. Fifty yeah. issues, I feel like, is where you're like cool, right? Like, fifty yeah. issues always feels like that's like an omnibus. Uh, of stuff you know but i mean at the end of the day it's funny because i think about how there was a man years ago uh we were at a summit and we were talking about this about long stories right like long stories and stuff and and uh somebody in the room i'm not sure if i want to say who they are uh (laughs) somebody in the room it was a it was a person uh was not a creator and it was not an editor i'll say Mm. uh somebody higher up um they said they said, uh, you know, Days of Future Past is two issues long. That's true. Yeah. And it's one of the influential X-Men stories of all time, two issues. Yep. But part of my argument with them at the moment was like, yes, but the buildup to that, all the pieces were on the table. And yes, I understand this is crazy time travel story that had not been done, but it's like all of those pieces, you know, with Senator Kelly, with the Sentinels, you know, with Mystique, all of these pieces had been already put on the table to allow those two issues to be as good as they are. Right. Yes. They don't spend a lot of time on exposition explaining to you, you know, 20 Who these guys months, are or why. 15. Yeah. At the time it was like, you know, 20 years, not even my guess was 20 years of X-Men yeah. history. Right. They were just like, it was already there for you. Um, and I remember talking about this with a person and they were like, yeah, but it was two issues long. <laughs> and they were like, and they were like, it haunts me. It haunts me to think about how important two issues became. And, and so it's funny when we talk about this, because I think, you know, also with these long runs, it's always hard because you look at Bendis when he was on Daredevil. Yeah. He has this awesome Daredevil run. And the ending, he doesn't give it an ending. He hands it off to Brubaker with like this crazy thing where you know, Matt is going to prison. Yeah. And it was great. And I, and I actually think that was the the right way to end it because part of the, it's a challenge. And one of the most beautiful things about comics is that these stories never end, right? That's right. They never really end. 
And, and so it's hard because in a lot of ways you're always in the second act. You can't give characters a third act. Right. The books that people love, the books people love, and I, you know, the ones that really sell forever, the evergreens, those books, they all have endings. Yep. They all have endings. And so it's tough sometimes, but I think there's moments where you're like, well, if I can't give it an ending, I have to give it something else. Right. Yes. And I think, you know, you have to, even when I was leaving Flash, when I was leaving Flash, um, you know, the timing was a little bit off because of death metal, but the plan was, because even on Flash, I don't consider my last issue of Flash my last issue. My last issue is Speed, Speed Metal. Metal. Yeah. Because that is when Barry says to Wally, like, it's your turn to run. Because to me, I was wrapping up Barry's story so that Wally could take over. Yeah. Part of it was always a little bummed because I wanted to write Wally. But then I was like, no, this makes sense. This is the right moment. You know? So I was like, and I, we had talked about a lot. And I was also very tired. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> you know, I had more stories to tell. And obviously doing stuff with Wally would have been interesting. But yeah. and I, I really love what Jeremy Adams did after that. But to me, that was the ending. It was like, I can't really end this story, but I can sort of do something with it. And that was, okay, Wally is going to be the Flash from now on. Yeah. Right? Like, knew that. And that was a big part of Infinity, um, or Infinite Frontier Zero, was Barry going like, well, I'm going to go into space. You're going to be the Flash now kind mm -hmm. of thing right and then the, and then jeremy took over after that so it was like to me i feel like that's what you kind of have to do when you're ending these long runs but it's funny because sometimes you're like oh a long run the issue that's amazing but then sometimes you're just like man those four issues are dope like one of my favorite daryl stories is the uh, well, obviously frank miller stuff but oh yeah frank Hunter, me, jr doing man without fear oh yeah and five issues and it has an ending but then not really because it's the beginning it's, it's yeah but at least it's a self-contained it's an end of, it's a it's a mini series yeah. you know it's not just like four issues during a 50 issue run it's like these four like yeah when well, you look at something like what you have behind you of all-star superman all-star superman right. beginning and you know and it's one of the best superman stories and it's it's interesting like i i think about this a lot when i'm when i'm thinking about my books of like you know how do you get to do all these things and it is funny because it's like i do think sometimes when I look at these books that I'm even working on, I do think about the possibility of like, am I never going to write this character again? Mm -hmm. You know, never going to have, you know, cause on flash, when I was on flash, there was a conversation early on where it was around, it was before issue 25 had come out. So it was, it was a good while ahead. And, um, I think, yeah, it was before 25 had come out and they were like, we, one of the editors said, they were like, we think issue 38 is going to be your last issue on Flash. Okay. And when he said that in that moment, I was like, at first I was like, okay. Because I didn't, you know, also where I was in my career, I didn't know what to say. But then I was like, no, I have so much more story to tell. Like so much more story to tell. Yeah. Um, and that was when I pitched uh, Flash War, which is what basically was like what solidified, okay, I have this big story to tell. They're going to let me tell it. Right. Like yeah. I, I laid out the whole plan for the hundred issues. This is the story I want to do about Barry and, and Thawne and everybody. And they were, they were like, cool, we'll do that. Right. Good. But it took that moment, but that was it. It was that moment of like, Oh no, I have more to go. And it's, it's interesting when you're working on these characters, you do have those moments of like, you know, am I never, I wasn't ready to go. So that was, yeah. big, but it is that thing of like, Oh man, am I never gonna write this character again? What do I have to say about it? You know, it's like, What's yeah. that? What's that thing that I want to do with that character? It's interesting, and it's also interesting to think about. Like, there are probably characters in comics I will probably never write. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like, if you get a shot, you know, take, take it. it. Yes, yeah, go, go and do something crazy with it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, what other questions do you have then? <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, what what era in comics. Is there an era of comics that you were like, man, I wish I was like around in that moment? Like, are you like that's uh. Well, like, you know, you be a fly on the wall. Like, there's there's times where I like I would love to be a fly on the wall during the '80s, particularly like '84 to '87. Just be oh, on the yeah. floor and just sit there and listen and just be like, "How are these conversations? What is the oral history of some of this stuff?" I would, I would love some of that. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, the the oral history thing always haunts me because like what we're essentially doing now, what we've been able to do thanks to technology and telecommuting, yeah. is like we can record these ideas these these concepts for posterity or, or just for our own edification uh and you know i, I I'm, a big, I'm a big proponent i remember as a kid i skipped them every single time but sometimes you know when you're a kid and you're like in middle school and you have a comic book you don't get to go out and get more comic books you are at the mercy of other people 
Oh, and yeah. so you read that comic book, especially if you don't, let's say, have a cell phone, if you were, you know, or your video game device is, you know, a Genesis or something. It's like you're not yeah. going to be able to, like, compete with the comic book. So you read it over and over again. So I yep. conditioned myself to read, like, the forwards and afterwards in trade paperbacks that normally would be, like, I don't know who they're for, you know, for the people who publish them, maybe, because most of the time they're skipped over. but there's some gold in there. There's some stories in there. There's stuff in like some of these forwards that like I used as like, you know, a foundation to start interviews where I'd say, uh, in 1991, you said this. And they were like, no, I didn't. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you did. You said it right here. You know, yeah. like, I can, I, you know what? I can say this, uh, uh, Jim Salak wrote the forward for Spider-Man torment. Uh -huh. and, he, and he talked about how he's like, uh, you know, Todd didn't want the lizard. He wanted other characters like Green Goblin. And uh, and I, so I mentioned that in my interview with him. This is going back 10 years. Uh, but uh -huh. I was like, you know, I was like, apparently you wanted Todd to draw Green Goblin instead of a lizard. or And he's like, no. And I'm like, well, in 1992, you did. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love it. You know, and it's like, that's the kind of posterity that I really appreciate because like the time changes your perspective. It changed, but like, I like getting yeah. people's opinion, like as it's happening because, oh, and then, and then oh, there's a recording of it. And then, you know, where it's changed down the line. Like I know my opinion on comics, obviously it's changed. Uh, uh, Same dude. Like when I was in my early twenties, I mean, I, I definitely had a very different opinion of comics than I do now. Like just. Yeah. By far, you know, it's like, I would love to have some of that. But it is funny, like, uh, I think I told you that story where I, uh, a couple of years ago, God, when was this? This is this a long time ago. I was like, uh, one night really late, I started texting. I, I think I told you a story before. I started texting Bendis questions about Secret Invasion. <laughs> and, uh, and I was just, like, texting him questions about the event and lead into it. And, and this is when I was, this is when I did the reread of that Avengers run. Yeah. And so I was like texting him questions about it. And I remember him being like, like, basically he was kind of like, what are you talking about? Why are we talking about this? He was like, he asked, he answered a couple, but then he was just like, we should be talking about DC stuff, right? That's happening right, right now. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But what about, uh, like, yeah. <laughs> I was like my little nerdy, my little nerdy thing. Uh, yeah. I do the same funny. thing. Uh, yeah. You know, I was talking to, uh, uh, it is funny sometimes, like, talking to different creators now, you know, about their books, like, really afterward. And it's like, like 10, 20 years removed. And it's like, their, their yeah. opinions have changed. And some of them have gotten more oh, honest, yeah. or some of them have gotten less honest. And so it's fun to have, like, a record as it's happening. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> I would have loved to have sat down with people, especially, like, during the, I mean, that's where those forwards and afterwards you know, yeah. are super awesome. Uh, but, you know, that the modern equivalent of that, because they don't do that now. And I'm like, I'm lamenting and I feel like that's something that I would like to see return. But the, the alternative is like third party podcasts and stuff where yeah, they sit down yeah. because you know, like I, I don't trust like corporate documentaries when it comes to that. Like, you know, when Disney made their like documentaries of the making of the force awakens and like, everyone's just thrilled. Everyone's happy, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, no, you no want the, you want the perspective from time. Well that, and I want like a third party. Like I want to see like the, the documentary of the making of the Phantom Menace, mm -hmm. because George Lucas is not, he doesn't have a studio. It's him. So there's sequences of him just like watching Phantom Menace going like, oh my God, what have I done? Oh, jeez. And uh, like, I want to see those moments because like, you know, or the, you remember how, uh, have you heard the story about how the Emperor's New Groove was originally a I am crazy ass well movie? I am aware of it. I am well aware of it. Uh, there's, a, there's that documentary, whatever, the Empire of the Sun. Right? Yeah, yeah, his thing's wife made. Do I yeah. have it? I have it save to watch and i haven't watched it yet but i am aware it exists um, right but that documentary yeah. like disney was like don't like they did not want any documentary like because i'm like but that's yeah, fascinating because because yeah. the emperor's new groove is cool and i'm like i'm happy it was made so like I you know, it'll work know. out well, yeah it'll work out my wife loves that one and i'm like now when i watch it all i can think about is what was there before and i think about like there is a whole like there is a whole album of sing songs, <laughs> you know, that like, yeah, they're just that, sitting there. I've always been, I've always been curious about that one. That, that is a good example. Um, but like, really it, like, wouldn't you love to have a documentary or a podcast series mm -hmm. of what it was like to make the dark Knight strikes again? 
Oh, to have like yes, yeah. I think about this. I was thinking about this with Jurgens actually, because like oh, I Death think Jurgens, if did, yeah, yeah, because I've talked to Dan about Death of Superman a few times, and and you know, uh, that is something that I think, and I think that somebody has done oral histories, but that's stuff I would love is like edited. So one of my favorite documentaries about film is the one that is just called De Palma, oh. and, and and in that one, what's great about it is is that they took Brian De Palma, they put him on a chair. And they put the camera on him, yes. right? And they were like, "We're gonna go in chronological order, and we're just gonna talk about every movie." Yeah. And and what was going on in that moment? So you know, he talks about Star Wars. He talks about Indiana Jones. He talks about Scarface. He talks about how you know George. Uh, I'm sorry, Steven Spielberg actually directed some scenes in uh, Scarface. Really. And yeah, this is the, the Spielberg documentary is really good too. That one is amazing. That one's amazing too. That one is very emotional. It is very good. I think anyone who wants to be anybody who wants to work in comics or as a creative person in any way, shape, or form, watch the Spielberg one, watch the De Palma one. They're very different. Yeah. But the De Palma one, part of why the Spielberg one is I, I it's very Spielberg, right? So it's yeah. like it's a bit it's of a bigger a bigger and polished. <laughs> yeah. But the De Palma one is great because they just put the camera on the Palma and he just talks about basically all the movies in chronological order and he is super honest and he has yeah. all these great insights into it and he talks about what he likes he didn't like he talks about what was influencing certain things such as past and how things in his past would influence things and it is fucking fascinating and i think that's something i kind of wish we had in comics like i would love Same. to i think i think brian would actually be a good example of that like to put bendis down and be like we're gonna talk about everything starting with uh powers or, or, or something Jinx yeah Jinx or goldfish maybe maybe even like fortune and glory he's yeah. kind of doing that though because you have fortune and glory and then you have fortune and glory too right uh, about the spider-man musical um but it's like i would love to be like all right let's just you know sit down and be like let's just just call it bendis yeah <laughs> they did a uh it's what was it uh john suntress has the word balloon bendis tapes and i don't I, oh that's I don't... probably yes that is probably the best example of that right now but right? i think those are all in the moment they're in the moment yeah so i wonder I, I haven't watched those in a while tom listens to them all the time uh i haven't mm. watched one of those in a while so i'm curious if how much they do like let's talk about the past or is the now kind of that's thing. That's actually that's a pitch to, to John to be like, do the Bendis tapes too and just go like we're gonna go back and just do them again. Oh, and revisit. Well they they still do it. They still they still do them. I don't think no, that's not true. a thing, but like I, I think it would be interesting to get to that. But also uh, uh I'm trying to think of other creators that I would love to just be like, let's just well Jurgens Jurgens would be interesting to just talk about 90s Superman with him. Yeah, um, Wolfman be cool. Talk about that. Talk about crisis. Oh, Wolfman would be great. Yeah, yeah, Titans. Wolfman would be really interesting to have that kind of uh, perspective on it. I think part of it is is that like sometimes you talk about this. Not not everybody is ready for that level of of, of honesty. Uh, no, they're, they're, of the honesty bodies are still not all buried. <laughs> yeah, it's tough because I always want this too. Where it's like, there's books that I worked on that I am unhappy with. I'm not gonna say what they are, but there's books I've worked on that I'm unhappy with, and it's like you know, part of the problem is is that I know a lot of people work on those books. Yeah. And it's like they were maybe putting something into it more than I was, or there was a moment where they they still they loved it, you know. Maybe it was a better experience, and I'm the one. I'm also incredibly hard on myself <laughs> at my work, mm -hmm. so it's it's hard sometimes where somebody's like, "I love working on this," and I'm like, "Yeah, it was cool." Yeah, <laughs> I'm, like, oh, <laughs> I'm not I satisfied. Change, I would change so much, but uh, you know. Um, Did we'll we have talk to, about a, another okay. meeting? To jump into here, um, but. Oh, right uh, we, today's gonna be a long day of Zoom. Boy, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> but uh, we should talk about what we're gonna do. Uh, oh my God! Yeah, yeah. We should talk about that. Let everybody know what we're doing in May. Yeah, um, folks. What are you? Uh, what do you guys do in Free Comic Book Day? Well, the day before Free Comic Book Day, before which is of course, <laughs> yeah, uh, the day before May third. While you're ramping up for your uh, for your sojourn to get yeah. comics on Free Comic Book Day, you should hang out with me and Josh because we're gonna be doing a massive All Stars live stream. Starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 10 a.m. PST. Uh, here on this channel, Comic Pop Returns, we're going to be uh, chatting live, taking your questions. Yeah. We're going to be talking about uh, comic books, comic books, pew, pew, pew. Uh, yeah. And we're going to have a couple special guests who probably don't even know that they're going to be special guests. We're not even yeah. going to ask them. We have to ask them. <laughs> we have we'll to ask them. We'll yeah. ask them. But, we'll, we'll, you know, it'll be, it'll be you and I and, uh, and, and possibly some other people. Uh, and yeah. we're just going to talk about comics for uh, a live and for a while. Yes, um, it's going to be a multi-hour. So, yeah, 
And, like this one's like forty five minutes, uh, mostly because uh, Sal and I spent an hour bullshitting before we mm. started recording. It's true. Um, and uh, and then I have to go to another uh, Zoom meeting and talk about DC stuff. Um, yeah. We've so, blocked off uh, time. This is a huge. This is a show. big. This is a big one. This is like I'm taking the day off from work, so I yeah. can sit here and hang out with Sal. And we can talk about comic books. And then one of my missions in life is to uh, is to convince Sal that he should watch wrestling. Um, so might, <laughs> yes, that's going to come up. Too. Yeah, WrestleMania. It might, up, it might come up WrestleMania. Yeah, WrestleMania just passed, and uh, maybe we'll talk about that too. And uh, no doubt. Talk about how comics and wrestling are, you know, brother and sister sometimes. So. Oh, they are. I was surprised to find that like very early on where i was like yeah i just i didn't put them together and then you think about it for two seconds I'm like oh yeah no i get no that. the story logic is, the story logic is very similar between the two yeah the story yeah. logic is there, there's a lot of similarities anyway we'll save that for then right you know so uh, that's happening but, in may uh, may 3rd so keep an eye yeah, out folks uh yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna tease out. it and post stuff about it leading yeah, up we'll to post it. things yeah we'll do a whole thing and then you know yeah. we'll talk about some stuff and who knows what we will we'll talk about there might be some other news around that time i don't know oh my so God. You know, we might be able to talk about what's going on in, in the world of comics and stuff that I'm working on. You know, yeah. there might be some fun stuff we can chat up in those, you know, in that in that that long period of time we're doing a live show. I have. <laughs> I have. Some yeah, ideas. no, it's true. And and Josh and I both have the problem where it's like, oh, I love answering questions. I love I love going long into into an in-depth topic. So you, you you're probably going to pull a lot of a lot of stuff out of the show. Folks. Oh, yeah. And if you depending on the questions and stuff, we'll see how how deep we get in and get into things. But yeah, uh, yeah, it'll be a good time. So we'll see you uh, in a few weeks. That's right. Stay Maybe tuned, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Josh, uh, what's coming out between then and now? That you uh you you think we should check it out besides the uh, House of Brainiac of course but we yeah, should House besides Brainiac. House of Brainiac I have look at this yeah so House of Brainiac I still do Green Arrow you know Batman and Robin is coming out um you know uh Duke and Cobra Commander will be uh, Cobra Commander five will not be out by then but oh. Duke five will be out by then uh Sweet. but the big thing you know I have the uh, Energon Universe special that is coming out on Free Comic Book Day so yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit too and that'll be really exciting and uh yeah i think people definitely need to check that book out so we'll probably end up talking about that a little bit too undoubtedly so uh stay tuned for that but thank you all for being here thank you josh for uh doing the show and we'll see you guys next time so long everybody. thank you <laughs>